This kid puts on quite a show. I have eyes on the target. He does not look all that threatening. Looks can be deceiving, Your Highness. Are you sure you do not want any backup? Ah, I'm great with kids. You thought the story was over. But it was only just beginning. I don't do sequels, normally. But things have gotten a little twisted in the multiverse. Who is this handsome dog? On Christmas? What is this, Con Air? No, wait, Under Siege? No, 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 oh, that's not it. Hey, John McClane, focus! Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Marvel dropped a brand new What If Season 2 trailer, so we'll break it all down. There's a bunch of Easter eggs, obviously a whole bunch of new episodes, and the way they're releasing episodes is totally different this year. They're basically doing like an advent calendar of What If Season 2. There's nine episodes. They start on December 22nd, and they're going to air like one episode every single day. That's why in the official poster, it seems like a holiday-themed poster, because they're basically releasing it right around Christmas, like the end of the year. We already know what all the episode titles are, so we have like a pretty good idea of what the theme of each episode are. So we have a pretty good idea of where the footage falls in which episode, but there are a couple of question marks. It'll be a little bit harder, but I'll do videos for all the episodes every single day that they come out. But just starting at the beginning of the trailer footage, the first scene is of the 1980s version of the Avengers with like all the Avengers heroes who would have been around during that time, with one exception, Thor, who looks exactly the same because he's like 1,500 years old in present day, so of course he'd look the exact same. And this episode is from What If Peter Quill Attacked Earth's Mightiest Heroes, but it's little kid Peter Quill who was actually taken to his father, Ego the Living Planet, back during the 1980s when he was still a little kid. So he's got all of his celestial powers, he's gone back to planet Earth to conquer, and they're just like, well, a little kid, he's not going to be that big of a problem. But he's got crazy celestial powers, which they soon realize. You also notice later in the trailer, there's like an 80s looking version of Ego the Living Plant. That's why he looks so much younger. The only weird thing about that during the Guardians of the Galaxy 2 movie is the Ego the Living Planet is basically timeless. Like he's functionally immortal, so he can look like whatever he wants to look like. So it is weird that he looks like older Kurt Russell, even though he doesn't have to look like he's older. Like he could look like he does during the 1980s here all young for the rest of time if he wanted to. But on this 1980s Avengers team, you have the Winter Soldier because he was still around getting unthawed periodically during that era. Obviously, he looks the exact same. Hank Pym is the main version of Ant-Man still because he was younger and still very active during that period as Ant-Man and the Wasp with his wife Janet Van Dyne. This version of Captain Marvel, though, is actually Wendy Lawson from the first Captain Marvel movie. You remember that Marvel was pretending to be her, so I don't know if this is meant to be the actual Marvel character who's just acting as their Captain Marvel. It kind of sounds a little bit like Annette Benning's voice, but I don't know if it's actual Annette Benning coming back to play the character or just a sound-alike actor. And they basically come to this fairground where a young Peter Quill, using his celestial powers, is just grabbing all the toys that he wants. Notice that they are raccoons for Rocket Raccoon. Probably a lot of Guardians of the Galaxy Easter eggs during this. But this is meant to be long before he met the other Guardians characters. 
You notice the jet that they're flying in seems like an early version of what the Quinn jets wound up being, kind of like a Blackbird. It's kind of the same vibes with the X-Jet from X-Men the Animated Series, like the classic X-Men comics. Then they reveal that King T'Chaka, who is Black Panther during this period, was on that Avengers team. That's T'Challa's father. When Hank Pym says he's great with kids, he's talking about his daughter, who is still a young girl during this period. Then when they land and they start battle with this young version of Celestial Peter Quill, you actually see Goliath behind them. Remember, they teased this during Ant-Man and the Wasp. Bill Foster was part of S.H.I.E.L.D. during the 1980s, the 1990s. I think he left during the 1990s is the idea. But he was basically the Goliath character from the comics who acts kind of like Giant Man during that era. I couldn't detect any big changes in this Marvel Studios intro logo. It's based on the logo from the first season for the most part. Like it starts like the regular Marvel Studios logo and then it turns into an animated version of the logo. Then we see scenes from another episode called What If Hela Found the Ten Rings? And here's what's going on with this episode. It's not quite what people expected. It's actually like what if Hela wound up turning good instead of completely finding the ten rings and taking over the planet. The whole idea is that Hela, instead of getting banished to that prison like the pocket dimension by Odin in the distant past before Thor was born, is actually banished to Earth, kind of like Thor got banished to Earth when he was found unworthy of the hammer in his armor basically giving Hela a version of the events of the first Thor movie for herself, but much earlier in the timeline, it seems like. So the whole idea here is that she actually finds the same village from the Shang-Chi movie in that other dimension where the dragon is. They wind up taking her in, and she winds up learning their ways. So it's kind of like Hela, master of kung fu, but she has all of her regular powers as well, too. Then it seems like Odin comes to planet Earth, and it actually seems like she's fighting with Wenwu here in the Ten Rings. And that's where they sort of fulfill the title, like, what if Hela found the Ten Rings? And it's Wenwu with the Ten Rings during that era. That's why he looks so much younger than he did during the Shang-Chi movie. Now, it's not clear why they're fighting a younger version of Odin, if he's come to planet Earth to conquer, or there's some other reason that he's come to planet Earth. But for instance, there was a bunch of footage of Surtur that leaked out. That might be from this episode. This footage is actually from a totally different episode. It's what if Nebula joined the Nova Corps. So that's why she's taking the Nova Corps helmet off and you see Yondu's body lying here. Not exactly sure what she's doing in this. Like she picks up that sphere. It kind of looks like Yondu's sphere from the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie that they were going to keep the Power Stone in. The actual schematic here looks a little bit like the Death Star from Star Wars 2 with like a little super laser port. Love the Watcher's joke. I don't do sequels, usually. Speaking of which, we're actually supposed to get What If Season 3, so hopefully by that time they'll work in some X-Men, some Fantastic Four stuff, just because we're getting so much of that stuff in the MCU and the live action. This is just another picture of the 1980s Avengers. King T'Chaka, Black Panther, this is Howard Stark, Tony Stark's father, Goliath obviously in the background, Peggy Carter, Marvell, and Hank Pym, Ant-Man. This is Hela inside that village from the Shang-Chi movie, seeing the dragon for the first time. This is from a completely different episode. It's What If the Avengers Formed in 1602. It's based on the Marvel 1602 comics. If you haven't read those, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's basically like, what if the Marvel Universe happened, but during the 1600s? So, like, all the character relationships are different. All the organizations are just a little bit different. And supposedly, this is going to be Elizabeth Olsen coming back to voice her character. But this is like the old-timey version of Scarlet Witch from the 1600s. The whole idea in the comic is that during Marvel 1602, the witch breed were basically the X-Men characters and they were the ones being persecuted by the church. Kind of the same metaphor in present day with like normal people persecuting X-Men for being mutants anyway. No matter what era it is in the Marvel comics, X-Men will always be persecuted. I can't totally tell just from the red illumination here because we're seeing them from behind, but like one of these characters with the cake could be another version of Doctor Strange from that era. This character with the little wing tips on the helmet is probably a version of Thor from that era. And I can't quite tell who it is with the scepter here, but that could be like a version of the Infinity Stone from that era. Then this Iron Man episode is like the lost episode from season one. We saw the tag for it during season one, like at the very end. Gamora wound up joining the Multiverse Avengers team, but Iron Man did not. Like he was wearing the junk version of the Hulkbuster, the junk buster. Basically, the full episode is called What If Iron Man Crashed Into the Grandmaster? So the whole idea is that something happens and he gets sent to Sakaar instead of the Hulk. And basically winds up having to fight in the contest of champions. But it's kind of like a Mario Kart situation here. Not sure how Gamora wound up getting stuck on Sakaar here. But like a lot of other familiar characters, like this is Korg here. There's a version of Valkyrie who's also stuck here as well too. I think part of the idea is they're riffing on the race from Iron Man 2. Like Iron Man loved racing super fast cars. Jeff Goldblum clearly back to voice his character, the Grandmaster. 
like I said, this is like the 1980s version of Ego the Living Planet, like the younger looking version of him, basically fighting that 1980s Avengers team by creating a bunch of golems of himself in the desert here. Notice Thor, like I said, is the exact same age, or he looks the same age because he ages so slowly. These are more scenes of Hela basically learning Kung Fu in that village from the Shang-Chi movie. Like if you couldn't tell from the darker liner around the eyes, this is meant to be Hela, but wearing clothing like they do in that village. This just looks like Nebula going after Yondu who uses his fin and his arrow weapon on her. As I said, this is Hela teaming up with Wenwu or the younger version of Wenwu, which is why his hair is so much longer. I'm not sure what year this episode takes place, just some point much earlier in the timeline, like way before Shang-Chi is ever born. And it looks like Odin is wrecking them even though they have the Ten Rings on their side. But I think part of what they were trying to say in the Shang-Chi movie is that Wenwu was never utilizing the Ten Rings to their full potential the way that Shang-Chi is going to be able to, which is why they glow with slightly different energy. Some of the only footage that's a bit of a question mark is here during the events of what looked like Infinity War because this is like the modern version of Captain America with the two Wakandan shields he was using during the actual live action version of Infinity War in Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet. Notice that he does have the entire full gauntlet assembled. This could wind up being like one of the final episodes. I think they're like two different episodes that it seems like Thanos might be in. But at some point during one of the episodes, it seems like they just wind up replaying some of the events of Avengers Infinity War, but things are just a little bit different. Also, not totally sure what episode this Hulk episode winds up being, but he has hella facial hair going on there. Just because he's bathed in red light, that might be from Scarlet Witch's chaos magic. This episode is the Marvel 1602, like what if the Avengers formed a 1602 episode because you see them fighting with swords and this is Ant-Man. Just because this scene is the 1602 version of Captain America, it might be from that fight, like he might be fighting 1602 Ant-Man. Not sure where this version of Rocket shows up, but it's a bunch of dark elves around him. This could either be the Iron Man episode because he looks super hardcore. Then we see Doctor Strange Supreme returning, and there's an episode called What If Doctor Strange Supreme Intervened, and I think that's going to be like the final episode. So it'll be the culmination of their big multiversal threat, like why did the multiverse Avengers need to form again? What is the big threat this time after the Infinity version of Ultron? This episode is from that special Kaori episode. Basically the idea is that an American Indian winds up finding the Tesseract at a much earlier point in the timeline. It winds up giving her crazy infinity stone level powers and it's just meant to show you how the development of the United States changed pre-colonization. Like, I think it's meant to be before it was colonized by Great Britain. Like what if everybody tried to come and colonize America but when they did that the Native Americans had the power of an infinity stone. How would that have changed things? This looks like Captain Carter and that American Indian character and I'm not sure what's going on here with all these portals that she's opening up in the air. But because it was the Tesseract, the Space Stone, that gave her powers, it makes sense that one of her powers would involve portals. Killmonger is back at some point. Just because Captain Carter is fighting Thanos here, Thanos might wind up being one of their big threats in one of the final episodes. That might be how they get to that other version of Avengers Infinity War. More footage with Scarlet Witch. Then I don't know if they took some of this footage to make the title like if it's from an actual episode or if this is just completely a custom job here. But it's basically the Watcher showing Captain Carter about some new big threat. Then they have a little bit of a funnier episode and it's basically what if Happy Hogan saved Christmas. It looks like it's happening in present day before the events of Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame because like all the classic original six Avengers are there. And we have Darcy with a bunch of cherries there so it looks like she's around for the episode too. Obviously Jon Favreau is back to do the voice for Happy Hogan. She makes a bunch of pop culture movie references. Con Air is a Nicolas Cage movie. Remember he played Ghost Rider in the Ghost Rider movies. Under Siege was a Steven Seagal movie. Then he explains that it's closer to Die Hard because he's crawling through the vents in a Die Hard kind of way and Die Hard is a Christmas movie for the most part. It looks like for some reason Iron Man is dressed up as Santa Claus. They have the Iron Legion putting a Santa hat on the Avengers Tower so it's after the events of the first Avengers movie when it became the Avengers Tower so like closer to the events of Avengers Age of Ultron because the Iron Legion exists then this is basically the original six Avengers or like most of them. Like this is Black Widow dressed up in the background, Captain America, Iron Man in his armor from that era, and Hawkeye. The only episode from What If that I didn't see any actual footage from is What If Captain Carter Fought the Hydra Stomper and they tease that at the end of season one. It's basically her finding her version of Steve Rogers who's turned into that version of the Winter Soldier. 
For the most part, this is set in like a different part of the multiverse. It is technically canon to the MCU. So like some of these characters might show up during Secret Wars. For the most part, like we saw a Captain Carter during Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. We saw a slightly different version of Doctor Strange Supreme. It wasn't this version of Doctor Strange Supreme, but it was pretty close. But like I said, the episodes start on December 22nd. I will do videos for all the episodes day to day. They're going to be nine episodes total, and they're basically just going to go every single day until they do all nine. So that's why we're saying they're doing kind of like an advent calendar style release schedule, which is kind of weird for Marvel, but they're probably just trying stuff out like, hey, let's get this out before Echo starts. The other big animated series that they're releasing early next year sometime will be X-Men 97 episodes. They didn't say exactly when the release schedule is going to be, but it'll be sometime after Echo's done. If you spotted any other Easter eggs or references during the footage that I didn't talk about during the video, just write them below in the comments, or if you have any big questions about the What If Season 2 episodes. There's been a bunch of news about, like, the director from Avengers Kang Dynasty leaving and them changing things from Kang, like, pivoting away from the Kang character just in general, so I'll try to do a video for all that stuff at least tomorrow or the day after that. Everyone click here for that brand new Spider-Man Madam Web trailer video and Easter eggs, and click here for my Loki Season 2 Episode 6 finale video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.